Good day, good day, good day, good day, good day. Another day has arrived. We just emptied this trailer. Did you watch yesterday's video? Thanks for watching that. If you haven't, go back and watch that one. There's probably a link to it that's gonna pop up above the screen here very soon. Those links, if you see them pop up, it's like titles to my vlog, something you see them pop up on the top corner of the screen. That's just a link to one of my previous videos. If you missed it, click on that and go back and watch it so you can catch up where we're at. My name's Josh, you can call me Trucker Josh. I make daily videos here on the internet as I drive my truck across Canada and the United States. I've been doing this for a long time. We're on vlog. Oh, we have over 3,100 vlogs done already, so we've been doing this a while. So join the crew, sit back, subscribe. And let's get going with today. So I'm based out of Southeast Manitoba in Canada. That's like Central Canada. We consider ourselves Western Canada, but on the map, it's pretty much right in the middle. We're right above Northwestern Minnesota, about 60 miles north of the US border. That's where we are, just barely over the border, just barely. But today we find ourselves in Brainerd, Minnesota. We just delivered our load here this morning. And that was in yesterday's video, like I had explained. So now my new marching orders are we're going back to our yard in Manitoba. We're gonna grab a load there in the morning. So we're just headed back empty today. No load taking us back home today. So yeah, I, I feel like I should probably do a better job of introducing myself before every vlog, just cause we have a lot of new people that tune in and they don't necessarily know who I am or what I'm all about. They're brand new here. They haven't watched any of my videos. I've been making videos for over 10 years, guys. So go onto my main page, click my username down below. It says Trucker Josh Vlogs. There's a little check mark beside it. Make sure it's me. When you're in the comment section, there's people who like to try to scam you and steal my, my profile picture and they have a similar username and they try to get you to go to Telegram or WhatsApp or something. That's not me. Okay, don't let them scam you. You're already right here on my page, Trucker Josh Vlogs. This is my primary social media platform. I want you to stay right here. Don't leave, please. That's why I have all these links all over the screen and at the end of my video of more videos you can watch right here on this page because this is where I want you to stay. So I'm not gonna get you to go to any other page. Please just re uh, report them. Uh, if you wanna know for sure if it's me or not, remember there's a check mark beside my name. It's like trucker underscore Josh. Uh, and then there's a check mark. If you're wondering, is this really him replying to me? I don't know. Click that username, see if it takes you to my page. While you're on my page, if you're new here, go to my playlists. I have my playlists divided up into years, starting in like 2011. So we've got quite a few years of content. We have one big playlist that starts all the way from the beginning, all the way till now. There's over 3,000 videos in there. There's a lot to catch up on. If you wanna binge watch them, just put them on in the background while you're working around the house, whatever you wanna do, they're there for you. I've been driving trucks since 2006. I've been doing this since 2011. I did uh, five years local work to gain experience so that I can get hired on uh, long haul because you need at least two years experience, right? At least I got five years local experience before I came to start doing this. Sometimes it's a little bit uh, frustrating because when people get their CDL, their class one, they want to get trucking right away. It's on the highway. They want to see the country, right? And unfortunately, most companies out here, they want you to have experience first. And that always gets them. Because they're like, well, how am I supposed to get experience if you won't hire me, right? Same thing happened to me. Nobody wanted to hire me right out of the gate. So what I did, I went and delivered pop. Or soda, as it's called here in the US. Uh, locally, for five years. And that got me my experience. And I'm glad I did that because that taught me a lot of valuable skills about driving a truck and trailer in a city and on the highway. One kilometer, turn right on Washington Street and then 210. So it's about a six hour drive back home for us. I think I'm gonna go home tonight. I think uh, we'll be able to pull that off. I gotta drop this empty trailer off at our yard and bring my tarps to my shop because uh, I'm not gonna need them tomorrow. And 
and then uh, I'll probably sleep at home and then bobtail in and grab a trailer first thing tomorrow morning. And that is also taking me back down here to Minnesota to a town called Park Rapids. And for all you new guys and gals out there, if you're still watching, thank you. Uh, don't forget, hit that subscribe button so that I pop up in your feed again tomorrow. So my area of operation is mostly the Midwest, like uh, about a thousand miles of Winnipeg, Manitoba, which is straight up Interstate 29. If you're coming up uh, through the eastern part of North Dakota there, I-29 takes you all the way down to Kansas City. If you're going south, Who's got the green light here? Oh, I do. <laughs> so yeah, if you head straight north from Kansas City, up I-29, you'll go through, uh, you know, Nebraska, this road for 37 uh, Iowa, that right by Nebraska, Iowa border. You'll go up South Dakota, North Dakota, and then you'll hit Manitoba, where I'm from. You keep going north up that, it turns into Highway 75 in Canada. That'll take you directly into Winnipeg. That's the capital city of Manitoba. And that's where my load is going to be tomorrow morning. But I usually go, you know, the, the, I should I should just say usually because, like I said, we go to uh, go to other places. We went to Vancouver Island uh, for the first time a few weeks ago. That's on the west coast of Canada. I've been out to Newfoundland many times. I've been to Yukon Territory up in northern Canada, northwest Canada, right by Alaska. Been down to Florida, all across the United States, every continental U.S. state. Uh, the only state I haven't been to is Alaska and Hawaii. Though one day I will take a load up to Alaska because we do have freight that goes up there. I just, one of these days I'll request it. I want to make sure it's during the summer because <laughs> I want to enjoy the daylight. And I got to make sure it works with my family life at home too because that's, that's a long trip. That's like a three week trip, round trip. Because I mean, I don't go straight there and come back. I've, I got to. It just takes a bit of time to go there. But I've been to Newfoundland on the East Coast many times, Florida, you know, New York City. We were in New York City earlier this year. Hey, you can go to my playlist. There's a whole bunch of videos in there. But I definitely love coming down here to the U.S. Now, the way it works when I come to the U.S., I'm only here to deliver freight from Canada. So someone in Canada sells freight to someone in the U.S. I take it there. And then the law says that I can only take freight that's going directly back to Canada. <coughs> I can't pick up freight here in Minnesota and go down and drop it in Iowa. Or, uh, you know, I can't pick up freight in Oklahoma and bring it back up to South Dakota to get me closer to home if I'm down south, right? No, the load I pick up in Oklahoma or Florida, wherever I am, has to go directly back to Canada. So I come down, I go back. I come down, I go back. Because if I were to pick up a load that, let's say I, I deliver a load to Georgia, and then there's a reload in Arkansas, deliver, I'm trying to get back to Canada. And so reload in Arkansas drops off in uh, South Dakota, Sioux Falls. <clears throat> and from Sioux Falls, I'll grab a load going to Canada, right? And get back home that way. That's illegal, I can't do that. Because that load that picks up and drops off in the US is an American job. And unfortunately, I'm not an American citizen. I love coming down here to visit though. The nicest people you'll find, other than people back home, are right here in the United States. I love our American neighbors. But, so if, I, if I'm in Georgia and I wanna get home to Canada, I have to grab a load, which means there might be no loads around me that are going all the way back to Canada. I might have to run over to Florida. I might have to run over to Texas. Hopefully not that far, you know, but I'll have to run somewhere, grab a load. I can go empty to grab the load, pick up the load and go directly back to Canada. And I have to take the most direct route. You know, I, within reason, like I can, I can't pick up a load in, in Texas that's going to Ontario and then, you know, take a detour through Oregon or something or like Utah. Because if I get pulled in there, they're gonna be like, what are you doing here? This isn't your route. What do you, what? Then that's super suspicious, right? Super sus, as the kids say. What are you doing out here? And then they got questions, right? And that's fishy. And one thing, as a guest of the United States, enjoying the privilege of visiting here, I don't want to give them any reason to not trust me. 
or be suspicious. I follow their laws while I'm on their soil. Obviously, they're in charge. They make the rules. They say I gotta go directly back, and that makes sense. So I go directly back. That's how that's how my, my job works. So we're in Minnesota right now. I know I'm a little bit long-winded here, guys. Thanks for hanging out and uh, not giving up on me. I'm in Minnesota right now. There's no freight in the area that's taking me back to Winnipeg where my reload is. That's a good reload waiting for me in Winnipeg. I wanna go and grab that. There's no freight nearby that I can put on my trailer that's available today. So I have to go back empty. It's only six hours. So uh, it's not the greatest, but my alternative is staying here and losing the load that I have scheduled tomorrow in Winnipeg. And the load in Winnipeg is worth me going back empty for in my mind. It's either that or I get nothing, right? It's just the way it works sometimes. Eh, I complain a lot about a lot of things, but in the end, I love my job, I love what I do. My complaining is usually just for fun, just to get a, either get a rise out of people or sometimes you just gotta complain, right? There's bad drivers out here. But we got it pretty good. They take care of us. Pulling into Casey's in Pillager, Minnesota. Gonna fuel our tanks here, then I don't gotta worry about it tomorrow. Let's grab that load tomorrow and go. I can run home tonight and not worry about anything else. Since I'm empty, I can cross through uh, Lancaster at Tolstoy. Saved myself about an hour. So I stopped here on Highway 59 in the small town of, I should have looked this up before I started talking to you. Uh, we're on Highway 59. We go through here all the time when I go down to Thief River Falls. Uh, Lake Bronson, Minnesota. So this takes us up towards Lancaster and Tolstoy. That border crossing isn't a commercial border crossing, but since my trailer's empty, I can cross through there. If I had freight on there, I wouldn't be able to cross through there. So it saves me like half, 45 minutes almost just going through here instead. Uh, may as well. We're going to head home. Uh, I'm going to go home for the evening. And tomorrow morning, I'm going to head back into Winnipeg and grab a trailer. I believe it's going to be a rolling trailer. I think we're going to have like those big trusses or whatever on it. That's what I'm thinking the load is going to be from what I've gathered, what they've told me, the information I've got already. Uh, so we'll hook on to one of those, bring it down to Park Rapids, and it'll probably be one of those that just roll right off. Like, you know, the freight just rolls right off the back. That'll be fun. But, uh, man, I got these chicken balls from this truck stop here in Lake Bronson. I thought it was, like, a, just a solid chicken ball. I have to share this with you. These are amazing. Mm. Mm. You bet you have it. Look, it's got, like, this creamy, beautiful... Mmm. With ham inside there. Mmm. It's like a, a tiny little chicken pot pie. A bite-sized chicken pot. It's delicious. I don't know what it's called. Mmm. 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 Worth it. Before we go yet, I picked up a couple of new uh, hitchhikers here. And my window and give it a quick little bowl snot. Let that soak in. Ugh. I could use the rocket spray, but eh, this works too. Just gotta do that section like right in front of the camera so that you guys aren't complaining about there being bugs in front of your view. Just let it sit there for a minute or two, do its thing. Wait for it, wait for it, okay, let's. Boom. Clean window. It's bull snot, visible. Ask for it at the store. If they don't have it in the store, ask them why not. Let's go home. I don't always get to go home midweek, but the last couple of weeks I've been able to sneak in a little bit of time at home. And I like it. I'll actually be able to stay the night at home today. I'll have to get up early tomorrow morning, but that's okay. I'm gonna get home at a decent time, like time enough to be showered and ready for dinner.
raining pretty hard. Dude. I would not feel safe pulling that, but maybe he does that all the time. I don't know. That doesn't look right. I'd like to get around him. There's a corner coming up. I can't pass him yet. Yikes, bud. So we're on the Canadian side now. Uh, went through Tolstoy. Uh, we're coming up to uh, St. Malo very soon here. Just going through Rosa. It's a big town of Rosa. All three houses here, I believe. Three, maybe four. I mean, it doesn't look like they're moving on his trailer, right? But you hit just the right bump and the trailer leans quickly to the right. I feel like it's just going to fall on over. He's going pretty slow, too, so he knows it's sketchy. He knows. <laughs> It'll be easy to get by him, at least. There's one more corner coming up ahead here. We can't build straight roads here. we got to build them all twisty-curvy. All right, got old blue in the shop, and I'm not taking everything out, obviously, because I'm going to be right back here first thing tomorrow morning. Just taking out uh, what I need for at home tonight, uh, my, my valuables and stuff. I even though they'd be all right in here, but I never leave anything in here anyways. So I'll take that out, I'm gonna change the clothes, I'm going to take my dirty clothes from today and yesterday, take them home, wash them so that they're ready to go for the rest of the week, just in case I need extras. You never know with the heat that's out there today. Oh. I go through like three pairs of pants sometimes. Like, it's just loading, unloading, tarping, untarping, unloading. Every time you gotta change clothes because you get so sweaty, right? But, yeah, we're gonna go home and have a shower, wash that all off. The camper will be back in here this weekend. I'm gonna bring that back. And uh, that that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm just gonna grab my... Uh, clean pair of clothes that I'm going to put on after I shower today and then I'll also wear them in the morning tomorrow when I leave the house. I have them ready right here. The knee shirt, pants and socks and everything. Keep those with me and I'm taking my dirty laundry bag. I don't got much but I will wash it anyways unless if Britt is using the washing machine. In which case that's okay. okay. I'm going to hurry home and get as much time for the family as possible. It's been a good day. A bit of a rush rush day, but kind of like every other day. Sleep well, old blue. I'll see you first thing in the morning. You better be ready to work, okay? Don't sleep in. Let's see if there's anything in the washer. I can throw this stuff in the wash right away. Get my shower ready here. Alright. So our new furnace and air conditioning have been working fantastic. The air conditioning's been tested out really good the last few weeks. Oh good, there's nothing in there. Noise! Let's throw my stuff in there. Yeah, the so the AC, <coughs> excuse me, has been doing really good. The uh, the heating, we did use the furnace for most of the winter last winter as well. We replaced the furnace that was in here when we bought it, which was 30 years old, uh, or yeah, about 30 years old, uh, with a new high efficiency furnace, and it was doing really well. This is our new hot water tank as well. That's doing well. So, yeah, it's all doing well. Just gotta get all this stuff out of here. And put it in laundry. I've already had supper. Got home just in time for supper. Pretty much I just walked in the door and supper was being put on the table. It's like, can't get any better than that. Alright, let's go check on Myrtle, shall we? He's leaning a little bit. Uh, a little bit much. I know it's a weeping. Weeping willow, so it's supposed to be, you know, weeping and hanging a little bit, but I'm trying to get it to at least grow straight because we just planted it this year, right? And I want it to have a good foundation for itself. So the bottom there, you can see it's good and straight. It's kind of pulling that stick off to our left in towards it. 
because it's holding up the top of the tree that's sort of hanging over to the front like that. See that? I don't think it's that big a deal. We're gonna come out here and check on it. It's got quite a bit of new growth on it. That's good to see. Looks like it's doing well. So I just secured those stakes a little deeper in there so they're a little more solid. And we might need to get like a bamboo stake or something just to like, you know, have right up the center of the tree just to help it to stand straight up a little bit higher. I, I mean, I think it'll be fine. Eventually those branches that are facing backwards there, you can't really see it against that other tree. Like those branches are going to grow out heavier, right? And they'll weigh the tree evenly that way as well. Once the tree gets stronger. The important thing is that it grows straight out of the roots here, out of the ground, right? I want to keep this very straight. I love that tree. I want to take good care of it. It's supposed to outlive me. Well, folks, that's it. We've got to end it here. It was really nice to come home during the week again. It reminds me of the days when you know I was doing local stuff, city work, and home every day. Man, that was nice. But it's also nice to hear the hum of the tires. But there will be a day, one day, when you know we have everything paid off. The money on the highway is better. And so while everything paid off one day and I'll be able to retire off the road, be home every day, take care of the yard, have a nice garden, stuff like that. But for now, Let's focus on what we have to do to provide and what we have to do to make sure everything keeps moving forward. And that means heading out on the road. We're going to Minnesota tomorrow. So I hope you join us. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you then. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching.